Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we were talking about angiosperms with seeds enclosed inside fruits. Now it was seen that again a need arose to further classify angiosperms because it was observed that even inside the seeds there were some leaf-like structures known as cotyledons. So there were some seeds where there were just one cotyledon whereas there were some other seeds where there were two cotyledons. So based upon that the angiosperms were further classified. So what was the basis of classification? It was based on the number of cotyledons which were inside the enclosed seed. So inside the seed, so that means inside the fruit you have seed and even inside the seed you have the cotyledons. So how many cotyledons you have? So what are cotyledons? These are structures or a pre-designed plant inside the seed. So inside the seed sometimes they are they appear in the form of a leaf-like structure. So they are basically some structures which actually is nothing but a very very young plant. So gradually with time that is the plant which will grow into a big plant. So those structures are known as cotyledons. They are also termed as seed leaves because they some, most of the times they give the appearance of a leaf. So based on this, they were classified into two categories, dicots and monocots. Now the name itself explains it, di means two and mono means one. So dicots are those angiosperms which have two cotyledons inside the seed and monocots are those which have just one cotyledon inside the seed, right? So if I talk of a dicot, if this is the seed, so inside the seed you have two cotyledons like this. Now when I talk of a monocot, if this is a seed, so inside this you just have one cotyledon. So that is how a dicot and a monocot were classified. So let us and try to understand what are dicots and what are monocots. So when I talk of monocots, as I mentioned before also, it is something like you have a seed and inside the seed you just have one cotyledon. So when it starts growing, how will it grow? It will grow like this, that one cotyledon will actually form one leaf-like structure. So with time it will form leaves like this, right? So this is how a monocot will grow. Whereas when we look at a dicot, how does it look like? A dicot will have two cotyledons inside the seed. So these two cotyledons will give rise to two leaves like this. So as the plant starts growing in the initial stages and gradually with the passage of time it will keep on growing like this. So normally how can we distinguish by looking at a plant whether it is a monocot or a dicot? If it is a monocot it will have single leaves at a time but if it is a dicot it will have two leaves at a time because two leaves will come up from the two cotyledons. Right? So these are the two cotyledons and this outer covering of the seed is the seed coat. Right? Okay. So now let us un see, look at the examples of dicots and monocots separately. So dicots are angiosperms with two cotyledons. They have broad leaves. Now anyways, when compared to gymnosperms, all angiosperms have broad leaves. Now even in angiosperms, the dicots will have broader leaves when compared to the monocots. So they have broad leaves. The vascular bundles in ring, so the vascular bundles are arranged in the form of a ring-like structure. That is the xylem and phloem are arranged in a ring-like structure. Floral parts in multiples of four or five. What do we mean by that? That means in, in case of a dicot plant, the flowers which we will get, they will be in the form of in multiples of four or five. So they will have these kind of flowers. So they will be either four, four parts or five parts or multiples of four or five, maybe eight or 10 or 12 or 15. So it will be like that. So the floral parts are in multiples of four or five. So even by looking at the flowers, you can tell whether the plant is a dicot plant or a monocot plant. So there are certain things by looking at which you can say whether it is a dicot or a monocot. If the leaves are broad, it is dicot. If the floral parts are in the multiple of four or five, it is dicot. Right? 
Okay, let us look at monocot. Now, what are the examples of dicots? Now, all these plants like the beans plant, water lily, uh, cinnamon or rose, all these plants fall under the category of dicot. So, most plants which we see around us and the vegetables, they all fall under the category of dicots. Whereas monocots, that mono means one and cots, that is cotyledon. So, the angiosperms with one cotyledon. So, here they have comparatively narrow leaves, not as broad leaves as dicots. Here the vascular bundles are scattered, but in dicots they were in the form of a ring. Here the floral parts are in multiples of three. So the flowers would look somewhat like this, either three or six or nine. So it has to be in multiples of three. So some of the examples of monocots are corn, tulip, onion, maize. These are some of the examples of monocot plants. Right. So I think with this we have reached almost towards the end of uh, the kingdom planting. So in planting we talked about many types of plants. Right. As I said, since this kingdom included a, included too many different varieties of organisms, so that is why we needed to subclassify them further. But I hope that you have been able to understand the, each type of plant. So let us now quickly try to review by distinguishing between certain things. So the first distinction between thallophytes and bryophytes because here uh, all the names of the plants sometimes people get confused so that is why I am doing a quick revision. How do you differentiate between thallophytes and bryophytes? Thallo means undifferentiated that means in thallophytes no plant body differentiation whereas in bryophytes the plant body is differentiated into stem and leaf like structures. Thallophytes are mostly aquatic, they need water for their survival, whereas bryophytes are amphibians, that is they, they live both on land and water. Examples of thallophytes would include green algae, under which we can include spirogyra or eulothrix or alva. And under bryophytes, we mostly have mosses, liverworts and hornworts. How do you distinguish between angiosperms and gymnosperms? Angio means covered and gymno means naked. So angiosperms, they have enclosed seeds inside fruits. Gymnosperms, they have naked seeds. Angiosperms, they bear fruits and flowers. In gymnosperms, no fruits or flowers. In angiosperms, trachids are present in vascular bundles. Because of that, they are also known as hardwood because they have more structural strength. In gymnosperms, trachids are absent. Angiosperms have broader leaves. Gymnosperms have needle-shaped leaves because of which they can, they can tolerate extreme cold weather also. Angiosperms shade leaves during autumn. Gymnosperms are evergreen, so they have their leaves intact throughout the year. And the last distinction between the dicots and monocots. Dicots, that means two cotyledons. The name itself defines it. Monocots, that is one cotyledon. In dicots, again, they have broad leaves. Monocots will have narrow leaves. In dicots, the vascular bundle, bundles are arranged in the form of a ring, whereas in monocots, the vascular bundles are scattered. The floral parts are in multiple of four or five in case of a dicots, whereas the floral parts are in multiple of three in case of a monocot. So with this, I will end my discussion on uh, the kingdom plantae. So next, we are going to talk about Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.